our next guest on this program he is a jeff cox the former president of snow lion publications and um and he compiled the book the short path to enlightenment instructions for immediate awakening by paul brunton and uh this is an amazing book i've been reading it and i feel it's my friend on the path ajashanti says paul brunton gives voice to the profound teachings of immediate spiritual awakening that have the power to short circuit the seeker in us and reveal the true nature of reality here and now the true gift of this wonderful book is is in how nuanced and subtle paul brunton understood these profound and transformational teachings and how directly he conveyed them conveys them and um he, um ajashanti says read this book as you would a scripture or a sutra and let it open your eyes to eternity. These accessible teachings distill the essence of currently popular and traditional sudden awakening teachings such as Advaita, Zen, Zogen, etc. Paul Brunton calls them short path teachings. A simple recognition, a brief a moment of grace, can make what seem like a far off spiritual goal actual here and now, but we need reliable pointers for when and how and where to look. Hello, Jeff. How are you doing today? Hi, Gary. I'm happy to be with you. And I'm happy to be with you, too. Um, this is one of the most profound books I've ever read, honestly. I'm happy to hear that. What particularly struck you? Well, what particularly struck me is how clear it is, how very clear, uh, for instance, in my journey, you know, when, when you talk about the long path, and the short path, I know what he, I know what he's talking about, and it's very clear to me when uh, that, um, you know, I feel that uh, that I'm that I've been consciously on a on a journey, and that m my eyes are are waking up more and more to the fact that that I've been on this path, and that and that the uh, uh, the short path is very and is 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 very attractive it's a very it's a way to go it, it feels like a need the, the time the time is coming where to drop all, all the every everything else that i felt felt like i needed and and just be uh, be uh, be what i've been searching for that's well put to be what you've been searching for mm -hmm. um, yeah the short path really is about turning from the struggles that we do on the path in terms of developing our personality, trying to make our mind, body uh, into a fit um, vehicle to express the divine that we all seek. But on the short path, it re the short path kind of comes about as we begin to recognize that the long path disciplines and purificatory exercises and self-examination and so on, that these things actually go on and on and on because the situations that arise in our lives always present new challenges that the personality has to adjust to. And at some point, you, for, you, you reach a, a place of um, recognition that somehow... The car isn't the the car you're driving is not the one that will get you to the goal. It's somehow realizing that the goal is already within you, and that the 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 part of the long path discipline has been to bring our our mind body into a condition which allows us to actually turn away from the things that have compelled us outwardly to the source within us from where which comes the things that we normally have recognized as the source of all of our virtues. For instance, the love we feel, the silence we can feel, the intuitive feelings or the intuitive actions or the wisdom that can spontaneously arise in any situation. These are all things that arise actually from our own inner being, our higher self, or what Paul Brunton calls the over-self. So... Some people may get the sense that, um, oh, good, uh, I, all this struggle that I've been going on, going and 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 for you know to find the source, to find my 
my true self, my true face, the enlightenment, nirvana, or whatever it is, that the moksha, liberation. Um, uh, I, well, the struggle I can just drop and just and now here now here's the short path and then i and then i can just hop on this and uh and i'll get what i need uh immediately instead of uh going through but uh the there's a misperception which is which is in the book you can read it there where the about the long path and the short path and i want, want you to mention uh say something about it uh jeff that uh that uh the the long path is probably necessary for most of us. Oh, definitely. I, in fact, sometimes you hear stories about people, younger people sometimes, who have um, a quick kind of awakening. Sometimes it's called waking up, or in Paul Brunton's language, he likes to call them glimpses. And a glimpse of reality, a glimpse of our higher self, a glimpse of something that is in us, available to us, but beyond the personality, is something certainly that can totally reorient us and give us a sense like there's something divine at our core. But oftentimes, those glimpses, they don't last so long, you know, like Adya sometimes likes to say, oh, an hour, a day, a week, a month, whatever, but then they pass, and you are then left with a slightly, uh, let's say, a juicier, tastier ego than what you had before. Um, you have some new direction and new inspiration, but it's the obstacle. The obstacles are really within our own personality. They're um, what the long path really works to clear out, and um, is the emotional reactivity complexes, our attachments. You know that where we think we're going to be happy if we only get such and such. You know, our, the things that we uh, long for in, this, in, in the kind of way of feeling like we're not complete in ourself, and if I only, say, meditate more every day or I only, you know, do more prostrations, like in Tibetan Buddhism we do a lot of prostrations, um, the, that I will then be at a place where, uh, you know, I will then be able to perceive reality. But on the, on the long path, you do X to get Y. There's a kind of a causal relationship. You know, you can purify your body if you fast some, if you clean up your diet, and having a, a clean and clear body, you know, proper exercise, flexibility, will help one to achieve a quiet mind. And um, that is great to help you to meditate. But as long as the effort in the sense of doing from within your own personality is dominating your effort, that's actually in the end you get in your own way. You're standing in your own way. So the short path, at some point you begin to recognize that I'm standing in my own way, and then there begins to be a bit more of the surrender to to what actually is. Usually the short path comes about um, as a path for one by some a book, a teacher, um, an experience, Something that reorients you and actually shows you, oh, um, I am already the higher self. This is my true core. I don't have to do anything to be it, as you said. I, I am it. But then it's, it's a different effort. It, different orientation begins to happen where we begin to recognize that all the good stuff comes from the higher self in a way. And that... If I orient more towards that, the it's kind of like um, learn to stand in the waterfall of the grace that flows from the higher self. We might be one kind of image from this, and in, it's oftentimes um, expressed that as as well. Long path discipline is important to develop concentration and a quieter mind because it's in the quiet. It's like learning to yield into the inner quiet that the, that the um, over-self can speak into us either you know, with quiet intuitions or inclinations towards one thing or another or a quiet joy that comes for no external reason. Or, you know, lots of fruits of this practice 
begin to flow as one reorients oneself towards the higher self. Yes. Um, the beauty of this uh, is knowing that there is a short self, the short path. The short path. No, just the, just the knowing of it. Um, um, what makes it short is that it's already there. It's already the there. Path, the path leading to the goal, it's already there. Okay, let's go on the short path. Okay, here we are. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like you can't gain more of your reality is what you begin to recognize. You can't gain more of who you are by by a path. It's already here. You could you could actually if you study this a little, you pursue it a little bit, you could actually get that insight, that intuition, and it's like a lightning flash in the psyche. But then what you begin to f- confront is Oh, but I get so easily sucked into the various, you know, situations of my day and the people and so on and so on, and I lose track of who I actually am. So that's why the short path practices, as they're called, even though we already have had some sense of who we are, the short path practices are about the reorientation the 180 degree turn as PB like PB is the what Paul Brunton used to call himself PB um like to talk about the 180 degree turn away from the personality and its concerns with its developments with its ups and downs you should turn 180 degrees and just face the inner sun of the overself and at some point you begin to recognize that the personality process is like a vortex of thoughts and um, the, the, it's our clinging to the, the outcomes that we want or the things that we're, you know, judging wrong or right or, you know, our involvement with all that story that some people talk about, our story, that our clinging to that process and wanting to get things right or better or so on is what kind of keeps us bound into the whirlpool of the personality rather than turning inwardly and beginning to receive more from our own inner being, and that becomes our guide in any situation. PB says somewhere that the a measure of how spiritual one is is how much one life is one's life is guided by intuition, because intuition is actually the voice of the higher self in us, and it it doesn't it's not always like big intuitions, you know, like E equals M C squared or something. You know, it's not like that. It could be just these little kind of inclinations. Oh, I, I think I should call so and so right now, and you call, and it ends up being something. You know, it's the the proof is in the fruit. So you you get us you get more of a sense from the response that life has to your own inner flow that you're on the right track, that you're living more in the life stream that flows from our own higher self. Rather than our shoulds and our oughts and those kinds of things, that kind of language is what comes from the long path personality process. Like, well, I really should do, you know, whatever, go on retreat for a week and that's going to help me or, you know, I'll be a better person if I do this or that. Short path cuts through all of that. Yeah. Um, it, it's very, yeah, I, I find it so refreshing um, to read about it. Um I feel like what I'm reading, I, I'm experiencing um, a lot of, uh, and there. You mean as you read it, as you read well, it, you recognize. I recognize that I have been on that. That this is this is this is I'm familiar with this. Yes. You, you know. You know. I've had these glimpses into this. You know, and and that I I. I have inner knowing more than I'm almost willing to admit um, because to the degree that I can admit it, I, 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 I have to let go. I have to surrender. I, I just know that what it, what it, what, what it, somehow what it means to truly um, live the life, live the life I'm supposed to live when 100%. Uh, Paul writes, he writes in the book, if I may read from it, of course. Yeah, uh, from the book, The Short Path to Enlightenment, Instructions for Immediate Awakening. Um, I'm going to go into the... 
He makes the radiant discovery in his heart of its original goodness. But alas, when the presence departs, the lower self returns and resumes sovereignty. The period of illumination is often followed by a period of darkness. A spiritual advance, which comes unexpectedly, is usually succeeded by a period of recoil. Jubilation is followed by depression. A greater trial still awaits him. The over-self demands a sacrifice upon its altar so utter, so complete, that even the innocent natural longing for personal happiness must be offered up. As no novice and few intermediates could bear this dark night of the soul, and as even proficients cannot bear it without murmuring, it is reserved for the last group alone, which means that it happens at an advanced stage along the path between a period of great illumination and another of sublime union. And uh, what, how I relate to this, Jeff, is that um, I'm recognizing that even though I, I feel that I've let go and surrendered a lot of a lot of the long path uh, accoutrements, you know, with, you know, I don't I don't feel like I need to uh, do this or do this in order to get better. I think I've let a lot that of let of that go, and I've recognized more and more in myself that the supreme nature of of who I am is at my is is who I am, and uh, and and knowing it and acknowledging it, but still as a human being, I'm still faced with with being a human being with with the trials I face, and yet I I am encouraged and happy to know about this, to know that. I'm on the right path that I, you know, just to know I'm on the right path. It's just good, good feeling. Yes. Yes. That quote you read is, it's kind of like, um, at the end, you know, it is the final, yeah. the final surrender. <laughs> it <is. laughs> um, it's where you can truly say, not my will, but thine, where you like give over the steering wheel to God, <laughs> whatever yeah. language, you know, whatever imagery works for you. But it, it is a, a, a letting go. It's, a, it ha, it's an absolute trust that the divine that you are can, can guide your life in the, in the right way, even if it's going to be difficult for the personality in the process. But the, there's a certain kind of fearlessness that comes with living from one's core that will allow you to face whatever kind of darkness in yourself or in the world that would come later you know, or sometimes, in the, who knows, maybe today. But knowing that, you know, your core is something that is um, not really, it's not touchable by circumstance. You know, that's the difference. We normally are so um, involved with our person and our, and our physical being that any kind of um, concern or threat perceived you know, discomfort that might happen, some social context in which we're shamed or we don't perform well or I give a crappy interview on this show, you know, <laughs> those kind of, those kind of um, concerns are the old habit of thinking, you know, I'm in charge here, I have to perform well, I, it's all up to me, and, it, and if I don't screw up, it's my fault and I'm bad. Well, this this path, the short path, restores you to your original dignity and allows you to also be compassionate and forgiving of your personality for its continued shortcomings. So the, the, the glimpses you get, the greater light you get, always uh, part of the purpose of that is to shine greater light into our habits and the, the corners of darkness that still exist in our psyche where we still feel insecure, where we still have doubts about um, the the truth of our inner being and how the divine can really be in charge or actually is in charge. Uh, sometimes we think, well, yes, but I, I could probably do it better right now. So it shows where the the, the fears and um, doubts still exist in us. But as as the the greater the light, the the more darkness is revealed, and the darkness does get resolved. I think that's the the happy thought. So um, with a short path, you're putting 
you're putting your money on God, <laughs> on your inner being. <laughs> your it's inner actually being. not. It's it's what yeah. people normally. There's a confusion. You know, people think, yeah. "Oh, I had an experience of God," but actually, it's their own overself. Right. The overself actually is an expression of God. It's the way God is individuated. Um, in PB's language, he calls God the world mind. And he really has mind as the fundamental basis uh, that we could call reality. But world mind is a particular, you know, like the universe, the commonness of our experience, the commonality of our experience, which is something a lot of non-dual teachers don't talk about, has to do with the fact that we are given the same world image to view. Um, but each, but through each of our own higher selves and our minds that are extensions of those higher selves into the world. If I'm not throwing too much at you all at once, no, it's do you fine. follow? No, yeah, I yeah. am. So it's really an inside-out job, you know, not an outside-in job. The the reality is something within us, and it, um, like spokes of a wheel, each over self brings into incarnation a certain unique vision, a certain aspect of the diamond of, of that is reality that um, you you incarnate through your various incarnations, your many lives. And uh, you can read about this in many of Paul Brunton's books. Um, the particular book we're doing is focusing on really on just these two paths, but the greater sort of situation in which we find ourselves Paul Brunton says there's three great questions. What's the world? What is God? And what is the self? And so in his writings, he really brings out um, answers. And ans- not just answers, but leads you through a reasoned presentation to arrive at those answers. So it's, it's really a journey that's quite wonderful. I, I've come, ba- I've come yeah. back to <laughs> it, actually, you know, after... 30 years of doing a lot of Tibetan Buddhism, but Paul Brunton was my first inspiration, and I've come back to it again, and I've had this joy of working for the Paul Brunton Philosophic Foundation and also Larson Publications, who did this book, to, um, you know, spend, like you, you're doing this radio show, and it's such a wonderful gift to so many people. So it's, it's always, you know, like a blessing when one can do something, whatever kind of job it is, but do something where you feel like you're contributing in a way that's in accord with your own ideals and interests. Yeah, well, without a doubt, and uh, very blessed to be able to do this kind of radio and uh, have have guests such as yourself on, and uh, Jeff Cox is our guest and uh, in the spirit this hour, and we're talking about uh, the book, The Short Path to Enlightenment, Instructions for Immediate Awakening, um, by Paul Brunton, and... uh, and Jeff compiled the the Paul's writings for this book, which is amazing. 